This is Math 432, Applied Combinatorics. I'm Professor Asaph, and the question we're gonna start out thinking about today is the following. Let G be a graph on N. So here I've got four labeled vertices, so G is a graph on four. Notice that G's not simple. I have double edges and loops. Let K be a positive integer, and we're gonna try to count the number of K step walks from I to J. Let's do an example. In the graph that we have here, we want to maybe take i equal 1, j equal 4, and k equal 3. So we want to count, we want to count three step walks from 1 to 4. Okay, how many are there and how can we count them in an efficient way? Well, one thing that we could do is we could say, okay, well, we know we're going to end up at the number four. We know four is going to be the last thing that we hit. Okay. So what did we get to just before we got to four? Okay. There are only two options. It was either one or two. So we know that the last thing that happened before we got here was we got to either one or we got to two. Okay. That was the last thing that happened. So now what have we got left? Well, now what we have left is, remember we're starting at one, starting at one. So what we have here is a two-step walk. This is a two-step walk um, from one to whatever's in this column. In this case, um, what we've got is one or two. Okay, so how many are there? So we want to take two step walks from one to itself. Okay, well, let's see how we can do that. So actually, let's do this one first, one to two. That seems a little easier. So if we're going to go from one to two in two steps, how can we do it? We can start at one, we can go to two, and then take that loop. That's one way we could do it. I'll write that one down. Um, so we could go one, we could go to two, and then we could loop back to two. What else could we do? We could go from one, we could go to four, and then to two. So four could be our intermediate step. So there are two ways that we could do this. And now what about from one to one? This one, there are actually tons of ways we could do it. So we could go to two and back. We could go to four and back. We could go to three and back, but this one we can do in four ways. Why four ways? Because there are two choices for how to get to three and two choices for how to get back. So here we could go via two we could go via four, or we could go via three, and there are two different ways to do that. So that's gonna give us a total of six ways. We can go from one to itself. Four of them go via three, one goes via two, and the other goes via four. So in total, the answer to our question is, there are eight ways. Okay, great. Um, what we wanna do is try to turn this into some sort of structured Thing. You can see there's a recursive structure to what I've done, but it's still not that obvious how we could get a formula. So let's look at a really beautiful construction called the adjacency matrix of a graph. The adjacency matrix of a graph, here's our example. So if we have a four by four graph, uh, sorry, a graph on four, we're gonna end up with a four by four adjacency matrix. The ijth entry tells me the number of edges from i to j. So this entry two here tells me there are two edges from one to three. Of course, it's the same as this entry down here because there are two edges from three to one. That's because my graph is undirected. That's gonna make my matrix symmetric. If my graph were directed, then I'd really wanna take edges just from I to J and then my graph wouldn't necessarily be symmetric. Oh, sorry, my matrix wouldn't necessarily be symmetric. So how does the adjacency matrix help us? Well, the adjacency matrix by definition tells us one step walks from I to J. So what happens if I square this matrix. So I could think about taking A and, um, let's see, we'll duplicate it and square it. So what do my entries become? Well, I can think about just doing the dot product. This entry is gonna be a six. How do I get that? Well, I take zero, one, two, one, and I multiply it by zero, one, two, one. So I take the first row and I multiply it by the first column with the dot product and that's going to give me this entry. Now what is that really saying in terms of the combinatorics? This is saying that 
when I take any entry here, so let's say when this guy comes and multiplies against that guy, it's saying I have one walk from one to two and from two to one. Because that's what this is. This is walks from one to anywhere. And these are walks from one to anywhere, to into one from anywhere. So a walk from one to two and a walk from two to one. There's one of the first kind and one of the second. So what about this entry? This is telling me that I can have two walks from one to three and two walks from three to one. So the total number of walks that I get from one to one that go via three is right here. So this is the number of walks. So two times two equals the number of walks from one to one via three. So we can fill out all the entries in this matrix, and I've done the multiplication, so let me just copy this down. And you can just check visually, pick your favorite entry here, the one that seems the most interesting to you. These zeros, I think, are kind of fascinating. Um, and just double check that that indeed works. So this is a squared. And then we could keep going. I could write down a cubed. So what's a cubed? Well, let me take this matrix again. I'm going to multiply it by a. And we can work out what are the entries. And maybe I'll just do one of them. Um, maybe let's actually just work it out. And let's take this row. Maybe I'll highlight it. Uh, we'll take this row. And we're going to multiply it by, um, so that's going to say from 1. And where do we want to land up? Let's land up at 4. OK? So that's going to give me this entry of the matrix. So I need to take 6. 2, 0, 1, multiply it by 1, 1, 0, 0. So when I do this product, I get the 6. That's the number of walks from 1 to itself, and the number of walks from 1 to 4. So there are 6 walks that take 2 steps from 1 to 1 and 1 step from 1 to 4. What's this? 2 times 1. There are 2 walks that take me from in 2 steps from 1 to 2. And there's 1 step from 2 to 4. Notice the rest are going to be 0. And notice this count exactly matches the example we've done up here. And when we finish multiplying this out, we see that we get the number 8. And that's a theorem. So let's write down the theorem. So the theorem that we have is for G a graph on N with adjacency matrix A and K greater than equal or greater than 0 an in integer, A to the K, the ijth entry, is the number of k step walks from i to j. And why is that? Well, we've kind of explained the proof. It's because of matrix multiplication. But let's make that a little more rigorous. So we're going to start by induction. Induction is a great way to do it. Induction on what? Not n, but k. Because notice that we did it for a few steps and then a few more steps. So k is the right thing to do induction on. Our base case. What's our base case? So the base case says, um, a i j equals the number of one step walks from i to j. This is by definition. That's how we define the adjacency matrix. So now we're going to get our inductive hypothesis. What's our inductive hypothesis? Our inductive hypothesis says that if we take a k minus 1 i j, this should equal the number of k minus 1 step walks from i to j. So now, how do we count the number of k step walks from i to j? Think about how we did it before. What we want to do is walk somewhere and then take a final step. 
So we're going to sum over the penultimate position we could be in. We'll call that M. Okay, and what are we going to do? Well, we're going to take a, a walk first. So we're going to take a K minus one step walk from I to M, to that penultimate step. And then what do we do? We need to take one more step. So we're going to take one step walk from M to where we want to be, J. Okay, that, that is the number of K-step walks. But now the inductive hypothesis says that this is exactly the K minus first power of A, take the I mth entry. And the base case, or the definition of the adjacency matrix, says this is just my adjacency matrix, the Mjth entry. And matrix multiplication says that what I've just done is I've multiplied a k minus 1 times a, which is a to the k, because that's how multiplication works. So matrix multiplication is intimately connected to walks on a graph.